So we just sped through a lot of things in relation to getting Heroku, uh, well, almost getting Heroku set up. Um, if you want a slower, more methodical way, uh, we have a, another series showing you that's free, that's on YouTube, um, on setting up Heroku in five different parts. And then we also have a whole series on deployment for Heroku inside of our projects um, on codingforentrepreneurs.com. This Heroku setup actually shows you how to do it as well. That takes a little bit longer than what we did. Um, I am not going to be going through that. Instead, what I'm going to be jumping through is just getting Heroku going in this one by creating a few things. Like I actually skipped a lot of different stuff. But what I want to do is actually create a proc file now in my local project. So I'm going to go into Sublime Text inside of SRC, New File, Proc File. And we're going to go ahead and copy what they have, which is web. And notice it says getting started. That is the name of our project. In our case, we're calling it ideas, right? So the name of the settings configuration module here, which has WSGI, which is what this is going off of. So that's our proc file there. Notice it has some build your app and run it locally, something we haven't actually done yet. Um, if you're familiar with Django, you probably have, but we can run Heroku local web. So if I run Heroku local web here inside of where manage.py is, as well as where our new proc file is and hit enter, it says no ENV. So there's no environment file working, but uh, it is now saying that it's listening at HTTP um, and then the 5,000. So if I go back into Chrome, I can actually open up that URL and I get this disallowed host, which is sort of expected um, because of how Django works. But if you see this, go ahead and grab this 0000, and we're gonna add it into our, let's try it into our production file for allowed hosts. And I'll save this and refresh in here. Still not working, let's try local, and we'll paste it in here. I'll explain the difference between the two in just a moment. It's also not working. So um, let's go into base.py and try it in there, and refresh, and we've got the settings file is not actually running correctly. So if we look into our init, we've got base production. So maybe we have to actually restart the server, which I did with control C, and then I just press up, and Heroku local web is now working. Now it's actually showing us up. Okay, so why is it that I went to all three of those files? Now, if you look in this init file or the initializing file, we've got the base um, settings file, which is this one. And then we've got the production settings file, which is this one. And then finally we have local. Now, when it comes to working with this, we probably only really needed to put this into local. So inside of production, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. And then inside of base, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this as well. Save that. And then we'll go ahead and restart the server, the local web, and we see that it's still actually working. It's running the way we sort of expect which is I'm just showing, hey, Django's working, cool. Um, hopefully, if you're watching this, you've already seen this. But the, the three different environments or the three different settings modules, settings files, local, base, and production, um, those are for your different actual um, production settings, right? So if you were to grab a my code from the internet, that is from GitHub, local.py is not gonna be there, but base will. So you could copy base into local.py and then your init file will be there and working fine. So realistically, base.py is not a useful. We don't actually need it. It's really local versus production. Those are the two that we need, something on our local computer and something on the live server. That's really it. So if you have questions on that, let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, let's keep going with the actual getting this on to um, Heroku. So scrolling down, we see this get build artifacts out of Git. We already did that. We did the Git ignore stuff. And then finally deploying your application to Heroku. Now, of course, this assumes that you already have your Heroku credentials in here. So if I do Heroku login, I should be able to actually sign in. So hello at teamcfe.com. That is our real email address. Um, so if you type in your password, it won't show up. But now I should actually be logged in and I am. So I can create a new project in here. And in my case, I could just type out Heroku create, or I'm gonna call it CFE ideas because that's the name of the project. You will not be able to call it CFE ideas because I just claimed it right there. Okay, so 
what happened here was it actually created a new URL for us. So if I go to that URL, check it out. Our new app is there. Yours will be the same. And then I also have a new repository in my actual Git repository. So if I do Git remote, uh, remotes, or sorry, Git remote, I see that I now have a new remote called Heroku. That means I can actually push it to Heroku. Really cool. Okay, so since I have this new URL, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that URL and allow it as an allowed host on my production. So just with the subdomain here and Heroku.app, if you don't, if you wanna just have all Heroku app subdomains as a way to work with it, you could just do it this way. But I want it to only work on mine. So CFE ideas, that's where it comes in. And now that I've got that, let's go ahead and do git status. And I'll do git add dash dash all, git commit. And we'll do update for Heroku production. And then we can actually run a push, but I wanna make sure I've got everything on the Heroku setup. So it's really close. It does say that I can, but I'm just gonna scroll through real quick. I have my requirements already done um, as we did in the last video. So requirements are right here. And I installed all the things that are related to actual um, Heroku, right? There's somewhere in here that they have their other her their actual requirements, but I did make sure that I have their requirements for running on Heroku. So I'll just do pip freeze one more time and requirements requirements.txt. Make sure you're spelling requirements.txt correctly. Um, and then I'll do git status again. Nothing changed, so I'll do git push Heroku master. So this is pushing my code base to Heroku and it's pushing the main or master branch of that code base. So again, that's some Git stuff, but this is really just pushing it to Heroku. Um, now it's gonna run, it's gonna run through some various things here. Notice it says installing Python 2.7.3. That is actually not what I want. So I'm gonna hit Control C because I don't want Python version 2.7.3. I want Python version um, three. So I'll do Python dash V um, and it looks like we're getting version right here. I'm gonna actually exit out of that. Um, we've got some stuff with Python on our end, which you probably won't see, but if I do Python dash V with a capital V, that's the Python version that we actually want to use. So I'm gonna create another file inside of my SRC file and that's called runtime.txt. And this is the Python version that we actually want to use, which we just put this as a lowercase and then dash. And now we've got the Python version that we are using locally that we want to use on our actual Heroku uh, app. So we do git status again, do git add uh, period, git commit, message, add Python runtime or Python version, and then git push. Heroku master, I hit enter. Now I'm actually gonna let it run and it should say Python version three and it is, so it's installing that version and it's gonna install my requirements. Um, so I'm gonna leave it at this and then in the next one, we'll set up our static files to actually work on Django as well, or excuse me, on Heroku as well. Um, we might actually run into problems with this deployment because of those static files. So we'll see you in the next one.